just a hopefully quick tear down, but <laughs> you know how these things go when I do them. Um, I have here an, yeah, external CD writer, not DVD writer with, uh, yeah, Firewire and USB. So, yeah, and only one screw here. So, let's take that out. And, uh, yeah, I uh, got the thing from a scrap heap scavenge, um, yeah, card link. So, yeah. Hmm. I guess there is a second screw. Ah, warning. Oh, there's, uh, there was a warning. Um, okay, nothing much, just warranty void if broken. Ba 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 null si bande rompu. This sounds small hmm, Spanish. Yeah, uh, la CD2, CDRE, Firewire and USB2. 52 speed, no, oh, at least. Sorry, I uh, was fighting with the focus. Uh, now we are back down here and I guess we can slide that out now. No. Uh, slide sides off. Mm, no. Huh. Um, no other screws here. Flip that off. Okay, so it's quite easy. Um, screws on the side. Yeah. I mean, a nice project case. Uh, or if you actually need a DVD writer with Firewire and USB. <coughs> Sorry, CD writer. <laughs> uh, I remember a friend of mine buying his first CD writer. It was two speed and it was about 1000 bucks. So, can we now take, lift these thingies up here with the case off? Uh, yeah. The bottom one is coming off, I think. And then we have the chassis with the DVD ROM and the front. In the front, there's also some screws. Nothing much here, just, uh, yeah. Put these screws aside. Yeah, a little spring for, yeah, for what? Ah, yeah, this blue thingy here is a button, okay. And we have a micro switch here. I guess, oh, the eject, the eject was done in software. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know really software, but uh, yeah, I mean, these CD-ROMs, they understand an eject command over the, yeah, IDE bus, not SATA. And there's also, can you see that? 
a little LED. Yeah. Okay, so we have that little daughter board here, which taped down with <laughs> scotch tape. So the daughter board here, yeah, nothing on the back and it's QC passed. Yeah, a little resistor for the LED, I guess, and the micro switch. And that's all. Or maybe that's a pull up resistor for the micro switch or pull down. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get that DVD out. They really <coughs> talked these ones down. Talking about gorillas on the assembly line. Yeah, and that is not fastened at all. And now maybe, okay, now the whole frame is coming apart. Maybe I can rotate it and loosen up that screw that way. Yep, I won't uh, <laughs> uh, tear down a CD-ROM. Yeah, look. <laughs> look somewhere else for that. Uh, what's left? Um, yeah, the controller board. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so the controller board, we will definitely have a look at that in more detail with the chipsets and everything. Um, I can tell you something is running here with 24. Focus, please. Something is running here with 24. Point five seven six megahertz and with 30 megahertz <laughs> okay uh, that's uh, such an odd number that must be an interface thing and uh, this I guess the 50 megahertz uh, 30 megahertz that should be um, yeah a processor or something well, we, we have a look at it later on. But there is <laughs> a second board in here. Which is obviously uh, for the power supply and supplies. Yeah. Huh. They really spared no costs. Absolutely no cost. But then La C was a very, very expensive brand for peripherals, uh, mostly for Apple because Apple people are, yeah, willing to spend the money. Okay, another daughter board here uh, with a power connector. I think there were several voltages coming in. I will look that up in a second. I have that power connector somewhere. Another chip! Wow. Okay, uh, I guess we have quite a lot to ouch, look at. Huh. Okay, um, let me find the power supply. It's here. So, uh, external power supply with 5 volts and 12 volts. So, yeah, uh, just enough to run everything, I guess. And yeah, two bolts. 
So let's have a look at the boards next. This is a little daughter board uh, with a power input jack here, plus 5 and plus 12 volts. Uh, this is the power connection to the CD writer. Uh, that connector here buggers off to uh, the front panel with the little micro switch and the LED. Only three lines are used. That 10 pin connector is not used and this six pin connector is the connection to the, yeah, let's call it a main board. <laughs> and at the center, oh, sorry, at the center, uh, it's hard to read, yeah, uh, I've done it beforehand with some tricks. Uh, it's a Xilinx XC9536 XL. That's a complex programmable logic device. So, um, yeah, something like an FPGA, but a little bit simpler to program. And that little thingy here first runs on 3.3 volts. It has 5 volt tolerant inputs, but can only put out 3.3 uh, volts at a high level at the outputs. And uh, so I guess this is a voltage regulator or that something here uh, to supply that. And <laughs> the thing is, that thing contains 800 gates. That's the equivalent of, yeah, 274.00 chips. <laughs> uh, uh, this is a power input board, okay? And it has 34 or 36, I'm unsure, uh, user-definable I.O. pins. So what the hell is it doing here? I mean, that connector here has at most one, two, three, four signal lines, one power line, five volts for the main board and uh, ground, so four pins. Uh, that unused connector here is uh, yeah, at most ground and nine pins, so nine and four is 13. Uh, two pins here, 15, and that's it. We can, from this board, we can drive at most 15 pins and uh, yeah, 800 gates. Why? And there's, um, I mean, I have no idea what this is doing. I guess uh, looking at this, um, yeah, I see, not trannies, I sees that there is some analog interface here for whatever reason. Um, yeah, interesting. And uh, <laughs> using that, uh, yeah, um, what's the saying? Uh, shooting with cannon at birds or something like that. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I guess that's the reason why that, uh, yeah, La C stuff was so expensive. Let's have a look at the uh, bigger board, the main board. Last but not least, the main board, which is connected through that six pin header here to that little daughter board with the uh, uh, pseudo FPGA. Um, yeah, our two Firewire connectors, our USB 2.0 connector, and the IDE connector going off to the CD writer. And next to the Firewire thingies, we have a Texas Instruments TSB 41AB2, which is an IEEE 1394A two port cable transceiver arbiter. So that's basically the Firewire interface here. And yeah, that crystal belongs to that chip because um, yeah, 
that's half the frequency of the data rate on a single firewire line. So uh, yeah, double that, um, 49.152 megahertz. At the center, we have an Oxford Semi OXFW911 TQA IEEE, yeah, here IEEE 1394A, that is Firewire, to ATA ATAPI native bridge. So this is doing the interfacing over to our CD writer. And yeah, I think that uh, Crystal is for that thingy internally running with, I think, 60 megahertz. Then here, <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably guessed it, uh, to the right um, near the USB 2.0 connector is a NEC D7201300. USB 2.0 to IDE bridge, okay. Um, yeah, and uh, there is a little serial EEPROM here, nothing uh, to write home about. Two kilobit with a two wire interface that is I squared C and it's an um, Atmel 24CO2N, sorry. And then we have uh, up here a little bit of glue logic uh, to the left. That's a um, Texas Instruments SN74 LVC 10A. That's basically a triple three input positive NAND gate. So three NAND gates each with three inputs. And to the right of it, we have um, also Texas Instruments, an SN74 A AHC74, and this is a dual flip-flop, uh, to be precise, a positive edge triggered D-type flip-flop with clear and press it. I guess they need, because they have two things going in here, uh, into the IDE interface and uh, yeah, that uh, Oxford Semi bridge here that can do a little bit more from the IOs than uh, just interface it or uh, sorry, no, that NEC uh, can do a little bit more than just interfacing USB to IDE. It has additional IOs on, yeah. Somehow they have to glue these two channels here, one's from USB and one from the IEEE, uh, yeah, to the connector. And I guess that's what this is all about. Yeah, and that's all on that, well, mainboard. So that was a quick tear down, well, at least for me, quick, of a vintage LAC external DVD, sorry, CD writer. Yeah, that vintage. Uh, yeah, with uh, IEEE Firewire and USB 2 interface. And uh, I even have some screws left. This will make uh, probably at some point a nice project case for something. And uh, yeah, I uh, you can't really recover stuff from here. Though it would be quite interesting to get this uh, chip off here and experiment a little with it. Mm, yeah, need an adapter board for that. Okay, bye.